Weekly mining news. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters. And as usual, we'll do the week's news, check out the prices, and then have a chat about where a new starter can get a job these days. First off, I just wanted to go through the rules of thumb that most employers have about hiring new starters. So the things that are deal breakers. And to do that, I'm just going to go over to the sponsors training page their underground uh, training site and you can get this under new starters and it comes up mining career checklist so if you come down one of the first things that you'll see is the drug test so that's obviously a deal breaker you have to be able to pass a drug test but the next one is a manual driver's license now a lot of people don't realize that this is a deal breaker but it really is if you've only got an auto license the first thing you need to do is go and get your manual license now that's for underground if you want to work on the surface you'll need to go and get your HR license Next is the medicals. So when you go and do your medical, if you get lined up for a job, they just want to make sure that there's nothing wrong with you. If you end up treating the company doctor like your GP, then you probably won't get the job. You need to treat them like the company doctor. They just want to make sure that there's nothing wrong with you, obviously, and they don't want to spend half an hour talking to you. They want to be in and out within five or 10 minutes. The other thing that is a deal breaker is police clearances. The easiest way to think about police clearances is is the mine site using explosives am i going to be around explosives because if you are going to be around explosives then you're going to have to do a national police clearance which is an asio clearance and that's a new government regulation that got brought in with the terrorism act in uh, 2007 so all mine sites that use explosives now all the people that work on the site must clear an asio clearance and that opens everything up and so if you've got anything in your past at all that will bring it up what are they looking for in police clearances they're looking for fighting they're looking for stealing they're not worried about driving too fast unless you got arrested for driving too fast they're not worried about speeding fines or anything like that they're not so much worried about drugs charges either as because they drug test you all the time and it's the same thing with the drink driving if you've got a standard license then that should be fine as well but what they're basically looking for is people that have got grievous bodily harm and all that sort of stuff so those are the rules of thumb with trying to get in of what's a, a definite no from the employers so if you've got any of those definite no's you probably look at something doing something else now next i just want to move on and cover the coal issue that's going on and a lot of people are watching this but there's 80 ships sitting over outside of china and they won't unload them now that's going to have a knock-on effect you can't help but not have a knock-on effect the reason being it's 700 million dollars worth of coal shipments that have basically stopped and so that's going to have an issue with the amount of actual mines that are opened up and are working at the moment and so my advice to new starters is that if you're looking for a new starters job then coal mining probably isn't the best place to do it. I've seen a few jobs that have come around, traineeships that are going for 24 months and all that sort of stuff that are looking for new starters in a few coal mines in Queensland. But the question that you've got to ask yourself is, do they really need to find new people or are they trying to get, just get cheap labour for 24 months? Because if the contract's only for 65000 a year or 70000 a year for two years, then all they're really after is cheap labour. But if they're paying you 120000 or 130000 like they're paying the experienced people then that's fine but my understanding is that most of those jobs are a training wage if you like of between you know 65 and 75 thousand a year which is unfortunate that the employers do that lastly i wanted to talk about the huge gold drop in price that's happened in the last week so if we come over to our gold table, you'll see it's down to $2,400. So it's gone down by $200 in the last couple of weeks. There's varying reasons for that, and everybody's got a different opinion. But one thing that just about everybody agrees on is that it's going to go back up again. The reason that I wanted to make that part of the news was it's just a good example of knowing that when you're actually in a boom, this thing's plunged by $200. But still, you know, the worst mines in the country are still probably making $800 an ounce, and the best mines run in the country country are still probably making twelve to fourteen hundred dollars an ounce on their ounces of gold that they produce so they're still making bucket loads of money and the same thing can be said for copper which has broken ten thousand a ton for in australian dollars and nickel has broken through twenty two thousand a ton in australian dollars as well which sees everybody making good money at that price 
and moving on to iron ore it just keeps tracking sideways at that nice high price which is good for the country and i'm hoping that that will stay up even though everybody says that it's going to fall down uh, back to the 55 dollars a mark but the more that they say that the higher it keeps on going so i'm happy that everybody keeps on saying that now we move on to coal and it's still around that 51 mark which is seeing production issues around the country. So again, you know, it's, it is what it is, unfortunately. If you are a new starter and you do want to try and get into a hard rock job, one of the first things that you can do is you can jump onto Seek and type underground in, and you'll see all the jobs come up. And what you're looking for are truck, nipper, offsider, all those jobs, they have to hire new starters. This is a good video to watch on ticketing in mining so you get a good perspective on the different tickets you need for the different areas of mining. The other thing that you can do is you can educate yourself about how a hard rock underground mine works and of course you can use the sponsors training to do that. With Do It Yourself you get the Australian Mining Seminar which has got all the information on how to redo your resume and interview prep questions. If you want a bit more of a hand then I suggest you check out the Work Ready program. You send your resume in, they redo your resume for you, you get a ticketed shift boss to help prep you with the interview questions and answer any of the mining information that you might not understand so that's a good way to go one of the reasons that i wanted to bring that up was that we are heading into what we like to call in the industry snatch it season so christmas is traditionally a time of the year that people decide to pull the pin and in hard rock um, snatching it is quitting so snatch it seasons quitting season and what people do is that they quit a couple of weeks before Christmas and then they start looking for a new job in January if you go over to the jobs you can see why people are able to do that and I know a lot of people that are smart about it and they've already got their job in January lined up so they've already done the medicals and everything like that and all they have to do next week is go in and quit and so they get flown home and they um, get to have Christmas off and they go and pick up their new job in the middle of January. Now the reason that people can do that is because there's so many mines out there looking for experienced people and there just are none. And that's your in if you want into the hard rock industry is if you can present to an employer knowing how it all works and being able to use the right terms they use in, within the industry then that really goes a long way to getting yourself hired. I hope you found that information helpful and remember those rules of thumb about a driver's license. You definitely need a manual driver's license. That's a deal breaker for all the employers. If you can like and subscribe to the channel and if anybody's got any more questions that they want answers to, please send them through and thank you.